Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by the Hard Truth Distilling Company and joined by Coach Mike Whitson, the Indiana basketball coach. Coach, we're at yet another Big Ten basketball media days, uh, unofficial kind of start to the season. It's an opportunity for you guys uh, to probably see the coaches and the other coaches in a way that you normally don't get to. And then there's probably some guys you're going to see today that maybe you haven't either ever seen or uh, maybe for the first time or not for a long time. Well, I mean, I, I've known Eric most of the, uh, the other new coaches that have come in, I, you know, this is the first time we meet them. I, I might have met them on the, the recruiting trail on the AAU circuit, uh, but this is the first time being around a lot of these guys. And this is a good time. Everybody's getting ready and being official practice now. And everybody's trying to get their team ready for this this big time grind. Because the big time Big Ten is a big grind, man. As we move forward, it really is. And it's gonna become even more of a grind with the added the addition of the four teams, a little more travel, but uh that I know the travel is something that you're accustomed to in, in, the, in the NBA. That's just kind of how it is. And I think the players probably get a use to that anyway. So, um, but you, I have seen where they're going to be doubling up some games on the West Coast. That has to help. You know, um, you know you, when you go from Midwest all the way to LA, you're going to have to adjust and get your guys comfortable because that's just how it's going to be. You know, they got to come our way. And, we got to go out there. You know, we go to Oregon and I think uh, Washington uh, this year and USC. What's uh, uh, coming to us? Oh, oh, yeah. You go to Oregon, go to Washington, UCLA. UCLA yeah. and USC comes to us. So, and then we'll flip it next season. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's what it is, though. I mean, I again, I've always said when these teams came in, Competition is great, and you know, those programs have always played pretty good basketball. I don't see it, any changes, you know, now that they're in the Big Ten. And, and the Big Ten is what it is, man. It's a, it's a problem, man. You've got all this talent, all these coaches that, that can really coach, and you've got to be in your A game. And with the addition of all these teams, you're right, it's grinding because there's so many more teams that you have to face, which is a you know a different preparation for each team. Will that have any effect on how you schedule in the future the the non conference portion? Yeah, I mean I don't think we can overdo it. And we'll still have like we'll pick up Kentucky next next year. We're still trying to figure out who else we need to play. Uh, okay, we got the Bahamas trip this year. But you know, I look at it like this: it don't matter who you play. You gotta, you gotta come in and play, man, and and, and try to build momentum regardless who you play early before you actually get to the Big Ten play. And you know, we'll schedule a few tough games. I mean, I like to. There's been talks about seeing like Duke, maybe Carolina. Here in the future, uh, along with the top experience that we'll have for the next four years. So, I mean, you still got to play some top teams, I think, to see, that, see exactly where you possibly be as a ball. And this year, that will happen in, in the Bahamas. Uh, you start off with Louisville, a team that you played early last year, but they are nothing like the team from last year because they have as many transfer players as indiana brought in louisville brought in 13 new guys an entirely new roster that you face well that's where we are college basketball you know, I, mean, I, I, I go back to when i first took the job i think we brought in four players that year five the next year seven last year and seven this year so i mean it's what it is, man. I mean, we're going to have to adjust based on who stays or who leaves. And uh, for, for us, we know we ended up losing three players to the portal, two seniors who graduated. And God was fortunate enough to get drafted in, in the NBA and they were. So uh, 
I'm happy and pleased in terms of where we are. But when I look at other teams, like you mentioned, Will, that's a lot of players you know, put on the roster and I'll try to make it work. I think everybody's kind of going to be on the same plan you know, in terms of how many players they actually bring in because you still got to put it all together. And then playing in an, in an event like the in down in the Bahamas, the, the Gonzaga is a team that if you get by Louisville, it's probably behind them as Gonzaga, and I forget who would be right behind them. But there's several good teams down there that will test it, your team early on, which is good, I think. I mean, but as you know, I mean, expectations always have to be out of hand. I think we put a pretty good schedule together from the beginning to the Big Ten play uh, but i think the Bahamas trip to texas we have a practice game set up to tennessee at their, at their place and you know, that'll be a nice test for us in the count but still you know, of a coach and you know, you've always had a good team they expect to be pretty good this year so you'll get a test next time. Obviously, you added a lot of uh, pieces, a lot of important parts to, to the ones that you have coming back, like Mackenzie and Baco, and the leaders like Trey Galloway and Anthony Leo and Malik Renew. But the, the new guys, uh, Omar Bad, <laughs> seems like you had an opportunity to do a lot of different things. You're talking about playing some small ball, but of course, you've got Umar Ballo that you can do some different things with the league. So it looks like you have a lot of options. For you. Well, at this point, we're, we're experimenting with a lot of different combinations uh, in our scrimmages now. You know, guys are very open minded in terms of what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, our perimeter play, even not having Gallo and Phil Strickland and uh, Takaya, uh, you know, it's still hard to say where we are as a ball team. But you're going to need both of those guys uh, back in, especially Gallo, right, because he's been such a big part of the team for the last three years. Uh, so I think once we get those guys full go, and give me a better idea of you know, what the different combinations that I can use so I can do those small balls. Do you know how long that you're going to have to wait for that to, to happen for you to be able to do that? For those well, guys? No, not really. I mean, Galloway right now is practicing, you know, and he's getting some contact, but not the whole practice where he's banging up and, and going up and down. So, and, and Jakai is, is the same way, you know, we, we just kind of slow walk and make sure that uh, the season started. Uh, that's more important to have the ground to go into the basketball field. So, uh, I don't know exactly when you know, those two guys will be full goal. So we just got to keep tinkering with what we have. That's, that's the one that we're going to play. Mackenzie Abaco, obviously a big, big piece, a, a great shooter, uh, and he really seemed to start putting things together toward the end of last season. I know that defense is huge for you, and that's probably an area where he needs to work and improve on. Well, he, he does. I mean, and, and all the new guys. You know, our defense is a little bit different than the places these guys have been, and that's not to take anything away from where they've been. Uh, our system is just a little bit different. And the kids, I guess, you know, when you're talking about playing that spot and, and the way we switch, you know, where he might have to guard small guys, you know, we got to get him more up to speed. You mentioned Luke when I spoke to him at IU meet basketball uh, media day. You, you can tell he is. He, he said that one of the things that he wanted to bring with him was a 
culture of winning from where he had been and played and not that has to win, but that's what he has uh, been about. But you can tell he's a very intelligent ball player, and that has I know that's invaluable. He's won, he's won a Big Ten title, so he's tasted. He knows, he knows what he's about. Um, he's been in tournament play. Unfortunately, not for us, we didn't make the tournament. So guys, like, you know, it's, 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 guys. They had not experienced each other, so uh, we got to make sure that we put them in the position. They put us in the best position with their play on the floor that you know, that we all can experience this year. To see what happens. I won't mention my name. I, I think I can, but I'm not going to. You, you had a not too long ago a, a nice get in the recruiting side that uh, is a good get in a good, How important are they? Things like that, getting those kinds of guys into the program. He's right up the street, man. I mean, he's he's played all of his high school ball here here in the state of Louisiana, and it's important that we get players like that. You know, he's a versatile player. He play a few positions, shoot and score the ball. You know, a little bit of everything. He's got nice size to him. He's going to have to do a little strong with which will make that happen when he gets to the end of the campus. But it was a nice pick up. Coach, thank you so much for your time. As always, we greatly appreciate it. Great. Good luck this year. Thank you. We'll be back with more Indiana Sports Bee Radio from the Hard Proof Studios right after this.